I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise first in support of my amendment, the Gray Zone Assessment Act. Whether we look at the annexation of Crimea, the militarization of the South China Sea, the economic coercion of Australia, or the cyber attacks that have stolen our data and crippled our industries, we see the same pattern. Our adversaries are using methods of coercion that lie somewhere in the so-called gray zone between war and peace. To make matters worse, thus far we've seen incapable of effectively responding to this aggression. It's well past time that we have a viable response. Experts have identified several causes for our failure to deter these gray zone campaigns. In particular, our weakness at coordinating all our tools of national power. By requiring the GAO to take a hard look at these problems, my amendment aims to move forward a process of reform that will enable us to effectively counter the shadow war China, Russia, and others are waging against us and against the free world. I'd also like to voice my support for Mr. Connolly's amendment number 114, the Global Health Security Act. After 18 months of lockdowns, masks, social distancing, school closures, and worst of all, a mounting death toll, COVID-19 has taught us that a disease that starts at the other side of the world can pose a direct national security threat right here in America. Back at the end of the 2018, before COVID-19 even existed, Mr. Connolly and I recognized this threat and believed that Congress needed to support, direct, and provide oversight for our global health security work abroad. We introduced the Bipartisan Global Health Security Act to strengthen U.S. and global capacity to better respond to outbreaks like COVID-19. Passing this amendment will help us be prepared for the next virus so that it does not become a pandemic like this one did. I would urge my colleagues to support this amendment. I want to again thank the ranking member and the chair and yield back my time.